Good afternoon, everyone. I am Linda Welbrock, the CEO of Leading Women Entrepreneurs and the Force for Change Awards in New Jersey during COVID. And we have a very dynamic woman here with us today, uh, Shavonda Sumner. And she, she balances many roles, including um, what she's going to share with us today. So, Shavonda, let me, let me let you take the stage and in introduce yourself because um, you're, you're, playing, you're wearing a couple of different hats. Absolutely. And, and thank you, Linda. I am so excited uh, to uh, be considered for the Force of Change Award. Uh, I'm Shavonda Sumter. I'm a New Jersey General Assembly member since 2012. I'm also the Associate Vice President of Behavioral Health Services for Hackensack UNC Mountain Side Hospital for the past 13 years. I'm a mom of two, a 20-year-old son and a 21-year-old daughter, a wife uh, to my husband, Kenneth Sumter, for over 22 years. Uh, I stay busy and active, and I'm learning to live a new normal post-COVID-19. Aren't we all, right? And, <laughs> yes. And you, I, knew, I knew you had a big title, so I didn't dare. <laughs> you know, I didn't dare take on Thank you. Um, and so impressive. Thank you so much again for being with us today. But let's start because I... What I know is that we need more women in in the political world. I, I was it was inspiring to see you know how a hundred women got to Congress um, you know yes. most recently. But tell me your story. So what what inspired you to run for legislation and and get involved um, and serve as a legislator today? So I always like to share that I've always been involved in politics, uh, high school, uh, class president, student government, but my godmother, Elise Evans, retired, wanted to retire, had some health challenges, sat in the seat of Assemblywoman for the 35th District. Uh, my kids were little, I was working in healthcare, um, and I was busy enough, community activist. Uh, and she said, I wanna retire, but I want someone with a heart for service to serve in office. And she twisted my arm a whole lot, uh, but I can tell you it's been one of the most rewarding experiences where I can make policy, systemic and structural change that impacts and transforms the lives of people, 9 million people, in fact, in the state of New Jersey daily. Yeah, so what does it mean to serve as a legislator today? And and tell me about some of the things that you're advocating for and, and working towards in your district. Linda, that's a loaded question. And okay. <laughs> so, just the, the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Service today uh, in elected office. We're called to do more. Uh, I like to say uh, I'm one of those local officials or state officials who's accessible to my district. Uh, there's over 80 members in the New Jersey General Assembly. We service over 220,000 people, but every law that we pass because we make laws impacts the 9 million people in the state of New Jersey. I've been very busy, uh, I'm gonna say during this uh, COVID pandemic, one, making sure that people had mental health tips available at their fingertips on social media at no cost so they can survive uh, when we're dealing with a challenging time of social distancing, which is physical distancing uh, during a historic pandemic where you can't be with your loved ones or either you lose your loved ones and you cannot participate in the burial process has been taxing at best on just human nature. Uh, so truly my focus has been making sure we pass laws that there's equity and access to care. Uh, African Americans and Latino Americans have been dying at disproportionate shares due to contracting the coronavirus. Uh, so we want to drill down into that. I can tell you I'm partnering with not only my health system, uh, but St. Joseph's Health System, St. Barnabas, uh, University Hospital, Cooper. We're talking to all the health systems to see how we can better prepare if there should be a second wave because we don't have a vaccine or a set clinical protocol. I wanna make sure that healthcare workers have the space uh, in, um, uh, mandatory, if you will, workers uh, in the service industry, food industry, et cetera, to receive the care and live should they contract the coronavirus, but also if they need basic care, especially for mental health services that is continued and there's confidence in our health care system. I'm also yeah. focused, Linda, on the wealth disparity uh, gaps uh, for African Americans and Latin Americans and the state of New Jersey. Uh, where we're earning less than 70 cents of the on the dollar and people are doing better financially 
on unemployment than they are working an 80 hour paycheck week. So uh, some big, uh, what is it, big charges and assignments that I've taken up, but I'm ready for the task. Yeah, there. this pandemic has really created um, a blank canvas and a new normal for the entire state and for the entire world. Um, it's yes. truly unprecedented. And it's going to be, I think, interesting to see um, how we all come out of this. But I, I want to flip over to your to your other role as the Associate Vice President of Behavioral Health Services. I know you talked a little bit about that in your in your last comments, but yes. how has it helped you um, survive COVID? And really, what do you foresee in that role, um, how you're going to, to help society? So in, in that role, uh, what I have learned and what our training teaches us is, is um, stages of grief. Uh, I think with the coronavirus, uh, we had to change what was normal to us. We had to isolate, as I said before. We had to learn to wear masks in public. We had to change behaviors, coping mechanisms. How do you sit in place? Um, how do you deal with the loss of, of your normal routine? Um, our children not being able to go to school with their friends and now learn how to use technology. Uh, I will say uh, being in behavioral health teaches you how to cope. Uh, well, it also teaches you how to listen uh, and also to be still. Uh, so I've been uh, doing some things that I've been talking about doing, reading some books that I kept saying I was going to read, bought them every summer, but never quite got to them. Uh, so enjoying those the do it yourself projects. Uh, so HGTV uh, works for me, uh, but truly <laughs> <laughs> also uh, for my peers. Um, and, and I focus on healthcare, but really is transferable. Uh, making sure that we're patient with each other. Uh, when you ask someone how they're doing, uh, instead of just accepting that fine, just drill a little deeper and allow that person to truly tell you how they're doing and offer some words of encouragement and be patient. Uh, because when things are, you know, just a little different and you have to adjust and need that time period to adjust, we need to allow the uh, the patience and the tolerance uh, mm -hmm. to get to that space for that adjustment. So. Uh, those skills uh, that I've learned in behavioral health for over 20 years, uh, 13 years with um, the Hackensack UMC Mountainside family uh, has really come in handy and uh, working with my peers to make sure we're accessible to those who need us. Beautiful. Well said. Patience is definitely one of the key coping factors. And uh, yes. it sounds like you probably had a, had a lot of tools that the world... Yes could use. So hopefully you can launch your own YouTube channel and we're all going to tune, tune into that. Oh, there we go. Next right. idea. <laughs> oh, and actually that's a nice load into my next question because I think one of the, I know this pandemic has been horrific in every way, but if you're going to try and look at the silver lining, one of the, one of my favorite parts about this, because my passion is, is truly around innovation. I, I just am drawn to people who can create something out of nothing. And I've always admired that. Sure. And this pandemic has really put the entire country, especially uh, our state and, and global uh, citizens in a place of, of creation, right? Yes. So we are creating the new normal. And I, I'd, love to, I'd love for you to share if this has given you other business ideas or strategies that, um, that you plan on implementing. So I can tell you uh, this pandemic has, has given us pause uh, to really think about the civil unrest that we're impacted with, uh, not only in the state of New Jersey, but across the country. Um, I'm working hard um, making sure we uh, put it into systemic and structural racism uh, within the healthcare system and within society in general. Uh, I'm standing side by side with my 20 year old and 21 year old uh, who has a passion for uh, justice and equality and I'm super proud of them. I'm super proud of this generation of young people. Uh, so I've truly um, reignited the fire to make sure that I leave the door open and teach as I go along for these new brand of leaders to also be forces for change and policy implementers. That's amazing to hear. And I think it's so important as a mother of um, three children, really that's the example we're setting 
things for, and they are our future leaders. Yes. So anytime I can involve them in conversations or in initiatives that, you know, make the world a more socially conscious place, um, right. like that is my biggest job. Um, I, I commend you and applaud you for really taking care of the most vulnerable and the um, economically disadvantaged in the state of New Jersey. And it, um, it has been really refreshing to read about all of the work that you've done. And I'm, I'm just Thank you. personally inspired and honored to have you with us. Um, so continue the good work. And if there's anything I can do to help you, you know where to reach me. I'd love to Definitely. continue the conversation. Um, I will ask you one sort of interesting pandemic question, which is this pandemic has, um, has made us miss things in, in ways, but I, I do, I am curious, do you miss New Jersey traffic? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hate to say no, not, not at all. Yesterday, uh, we went to Trenton for the first time and I was on the turnpike and I sat in traffic and I said, I do not miss this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I think there's a part of me where I felt ways I got a lot of thinking time done in my car, but in other ways it was like, you know, being dead stopped in front of the Holland Tunnel. Never, never had <laughs> right. On time. So what I, I'm grateful that we didn't have to drive anywhere to have this beautiful interview. Um, yes. I congratulate you on all of your Thank success. You. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you and your loved ones are healthy. Um, we know that we're going to come out of this and make yes. New Jersey strong again. And um, Jersey Strong will, has, has our, been our theme for many years. So thank you for being a part thank of that. And I cannot wait to celebrate and honor you on November 8th. Thank you. Appreciate it, Linda, truly. Okay, take care. All right, stay safe. You too.